Let's get ready to rumble! Welcome to Boxing Unwrapped. It's Boxing Unwrapped, a boxing podcast by two guys who have never been to a Pizza Express in Woking. I'm Ryan. <laughs> I think I actually might have been to a Pizza Express in Woking, but, but you know the funny thing is I can't remember, I couldn't tell you what date it was, but I think I have been to one. And the funny thing is, I don't often go to Pizza Express in Woking, that's how I remember. Oh, me. Oh, me. Right, well, welcome back to What the F is the Boxing News, guys, the boxing podcast that gives you everything you need to know about last week, this week, and all the stuff in between. Andy, do you want to tell the good people what we've got in store for them? Yeah, we're going to talk about what were the results, or just the result from last week, and we can talk a little bit about that fight, and a good one it was, too. What the F are the fights this weekend, and there's a... A big card, either side of the big ocean. Oh, yeah. um, we can talk about what the F went wrong last week, and there is a few things to go over, mm. as I'm sure our, our avid listeners would have noticed from the previous occasion. We can talk about the rather exciting crop of random news from for uh, talking about the upcoming fights and plenty more. The We can talk about what grinds our gears as well, and what, of course, round off with a little bit of Listener Corner. Well, let's dive in then to what the F are the result from last week. <laughs> there was only one result, yeah. wasn't it? And it was a very, very good fight. Uh, it was a great fight. Lee McGregor versus Cash Farouk. Um, Lee McGregor wins on a split decision. A controversial split decision, Andy. Very oh, controversial. Oh, I- it was controversial. I, when I was watching it, I think part of me kind of thinks I was l- maybe a little bit led down the path of the commentator. You know, I was when I was watching it, I was uh, like, I was I was very kind of conscious of how uh, in favor they were of Cash Farouk the whole way around, and like, well, that was yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like I think the the first round Cash Farouk did pretty well, and then the the kind of Beginning rounds, I actually thought Lee McGregor was pipping every round. I was like, no, he's, he's definitely like being more aggressive and stuff. He opened up that cut on Cash Farouk's face. Mm-hmm. And like some of the, the later rounds, Farouk was doing well. And obviously McGregor got a point docked as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so it was very tight. And they were both like absolutely banging bells out of each other. Um, mm-hmm. But I think... If you watched it with the sound off, I think you would probably go, yeah, it's about right, Lee McGregor, got it. But what I don't understand, actually, is um, the level of tightness. Like, Well, sorry, the the divide in one of them. So 115 to 112, one of the judges had it. And including a point, deduction. including a point deduction, which I, which I don't actually think is is necessarily possible unless you are given Lee McGregor some serious rounds in at points. Um, but a banger of a fight, man! These guys were going at it, huh? See, obviously, um, the summarizer Alex Arthur, he was saying. You know, time and again during it, they're saying like this. Well, you know, th- these guys are both destined for kind of like world level fights. Mm-hmm. And watching it, I was kind of going, I don't know if I'm just agreeing because he's planted that seed in my mind, but but for the stage of their careers they were at, I I did actually think it looked like a very very high quality fight. It did look mm-hmm. like the sort of fight that you wouldn't have that much different, where it could be like sort of like a world level fight. Yeah. I, I thought they really were impressive. Yeah, they they were very impressive. The the one thing that I found most impressive is how the fuck Lee McGregor can make bantamweight. <laughs> <laughs> like, totally. you know, I mean, because he is, he was much taller than Cash Farouk. He's a much bigger guy. He had a much bigger neck. Mm-hmm. Um, so he must have outweighed Cash Farouk by a stone and a half at least on the night. Oh, I thought a stone and a half. I right. thought, man, he was fucking <laughs> way bigger. He was way bigger. Like, Cash Farouk, like, was, you know, he, he was so much smaller. And I, I just don't understand how Lee McGregor is making bantamweight. And I don't think 
because he's quite young, but I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to make bantamweight. You know, because it, it, it's, I mean, it's super light, man. Super light. <laughs> he does look very, like, limmy. <laughs> like, my, my thighs weigh more than both of these lads. Like... So I was just checking. Farouk's five five, mm-hmm. and McGregor's five seven and a half. To me, it looked like there was more than two and a half inches in mm-hmm. height difference. Mm-hmm. It, it really substantial. I think I think Cash Farouk's five five on stilts. <laughs> um, I guess I guess that did prove to be uh, something probably like leaning down on him rather than mm-hmm. pushing up probably did help him but it was there was a lot of like really uh, brutal kind of close quarters pull, like sort of pulling or the odd punch when they're like mm-hmm. really kind of tied up mm-hmm. almost tied up punches coming out of the clinch sort of thing there was it was up close and personal a lot of the time, wasn't it? It was, yeah. it was really brutal stuff. But then there were, there were spells where there was obviously a bit more at range and there was some high-quality work. Yeah. Some of the earlier rounds especially, I thought some of Farouk's upper body movement was exceptional. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, like, he was very really difficult good. to hit. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But he, I think because his upper body movement is so good, he's a bit lazy with his hands. And I mm-hmm. think that actually maybe put him in a, a, a little bit of trouble. To be honest. It's a good point. You know. It's a good point. It's a good point, yeah. Um, I thought also during the kind of some of the middle to later rounds, McGregor at points looked as if he was going to fade, but then it completely turned around and and Mm -hmm. he kind of came on strong in the last few rounds and and Farouk looked as if he was kind of almost out on his feet at points. So it was, it it had a real like ebb and flow. It was a really, really like, I, I, I remember watching it and I was like, I was completely captivated by it. I was like, this is really, really high quality affair. They couldn't really have hoped for the the quality of the fight to be any higher. And I'll be interested to see like where they go. I mean, uh, or what they do next. Uh, it was only McGregor's eighth fight, which seems absurd. Yeah, it? especially at that level. Yeah. Um, um, so I was impressed. I I think uh, I think it, it's it shows it shows like a, especially at like this kind of level and I think it's good to show that you know Scotland is producing um, some incredible boxers. Mm-hmm. Do you know who is according to Boxrec who is the second best bantamweight in the UK? <sighs> Ooh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I I think you I think you'll go down the wrong garden path here. Just I'm just telling you. All right. I, I I'm gonna say Cash Farouk. No, he's so he's according to Box Trek, which is kind of like just made up. But uh, he's he's fourth. McGregor is third. Paul Butler is first by some distance and second is a very famous <laughs> fighter. F- in- sorry, infamous fighter. Who's done most of his fighting overseas. Oh, uh, I don't know who. <laughs> Perhaps primarily in Hungary. Oh, no way! Oh, my, my, <laughs> Prince, what's his name? Prince Dickhead. Uh... <laughs> Prince Patel is that his name? Yeah, yeah. So Prince Patel is number two ranked according to Box Trek. So McGregor no way. Yeah, Fuck, I, mean, I didn't even know he was still active in fucking Hungary. To be honest with you, his last fight was in September. So actually, his last fight was in September, but it was in Germany rather <laughs> rather than Hungary. Rather than Hungary, he's spread his wings a little bit. He's fought in. Uh, Egypt and Saudi and Germany in his last fight. Ah, Saudi's where the money is. And then they want fucking boxing matches, like. <laughs> fucking hell. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, you should fight him next. That'd be funny. That would be hilarious. I, I think I he's think banished, though. He's banished from the fucking UK. Like, I don't think anybody in the UK boxing scene wants anything to do with him. I think that's why he's fucked off, isn't it? Why? He's gone travelling, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, well, why don't we move on then? Because we have a lot to get through. 
to mm-hmm. what the F are the fights this weekend? Do we want to very briefly mention, but it's not much more than mention, the, the golden contract stuff yeah, on, Sky on Sky on Friday? Have you been following it? Not at all, but I think that guy Kid Caramel is, is fighting. <laughs> What's his name? I think he's Scottish, is he not? He retired. Um, what is his name? Uh, Lewis, Lewis Benson. <laughs> It's his nickname, Kid Caramel. Kid Caramel, yeah. Um, so I don't know. He he lost last year in is, in Glasgow. Is it, do you ref- remember? is it is it like a slightly r- sort of dodgy reference to his skin color? I think so. Ethnicity? Yeah, is yeah. This an ethnic. Re- it is. Sh- it is. Yeah. Honestly, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, he he also has like a like a a meal prep service. Because like he'd he'd basically retired for a bit, and then um, decided like that he was going to come back. Um, right. Okay. But uh, so I think he's in it. So um, and I think there's a, a few other guys, and they're all kind of fighting to try and get the golden contract. Right. So this I think this is the the quarterfinals, is it? Um, yeah. Yeah. They did. Yeah. There's four. So. Uh, I O'Hara heard, Davies I, not, is in it I've as well. Sorry, O'Hara Davies is in it as well. Yeah, so so I saw this like headline. It was O'Hara Davies shocks at the press conference, and it was because he was like nice and apologetic and didn't you know say anything controversial. So he says he's like a new me. He's not me. He's got a new him. <laughs> if you like, <laughs> he's a new you. He's not a new. He's a new him. <laughs> Um, we'll see. I don't know. I think he's not made the most. I think he was supposed. Well, he was talented, and then after Taylor beat him, it kind of it's all kind of gone off the rails. There, it's either like he was found out as not being as talent talented as he was, mm-hmm. or um, he's just kind of like disintegrated. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. but anyway, there's the Mohammed Mamoun. I know him, and then I think yeah, Tyrone McKenna. Mm-hmm. I know him as well. Some of the other ones I don't know. But anyway, so. Yeah, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Sky Sports. Sky Sports. Watch it. Be there or don't. Your choice. Yeah, totally. Do the Christmas shopping, um, and then live from Liverpool, England, <laughs> live on Sky Sports and DAZN. Uh There's a card <laughs> on matchroom card. Callum Smith versus John Ryder is the headline, but should we talk about some of the? The bottom end fights first. You can do if you want. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not fussed. <laughs> well, so there's there's uh, Sean Dodd versus Tom Farrell. He he's kind of like he's like the lighter weight <laughs> equivalent of Dave Allen. Isn't well, he? yeah. So he's 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 probably most famous for uh, losing against Joe Cordina, also losing against Tommy Coyle. Um, he beat, uh, sorry, lost against Scott Cardle, and then he also had a draw with Scott Cardle. Mm-hmm. Uh, he lost against Andy Townsend. So, like a lot of guys that you've heard of, he's lost. He's been, by he's been beaten by him. He's kind of like the Danny. Well, he's like a British light, uh, lighter version of Danny. Williams. Yeah, exactly. Like earlier in his career. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, he's fighting. I mean, that's. It's kind of one of these kind of pick em fights at this level. I'd imagine that actually uh, your money should probably go on, on Tom Farrell um, because I think he's more the up-and-coming fighter. Um, he he did lose <laughs> against yeah, O'Hara Davies, know. though. Uh, yes, he did, which obviously doesn't count against them. Yeah. Uh, which does count against them. Uh who else is fighting? Your your favourite, Anthony Fowler. He's fighting unbeaten Harry Scarf. Yes, he is, actually. And this is back down at Super Welter. Now, I don't know if you remember, his last fight was actually at middleweight. And he, uh, Yes, I do. Yeah, I do and he, he won, like, some that. sort of continental belt at middleweight. Um, mm-hmm. And this is back down at Super Welter. I think we were both very unimpressed with his last outing. 
We were. Um, we were. And so it'll be interesting to see. Now, <clears throat> just to give you, our listeners, a little bit of insight on Harry Scarf, right? He's had eight fights, eight wins, but no picture on box rec, which I think <laughs> tells you quite a lot about the level of, of fighter we're dealing with here, right? And also, also about the uh, kind of level of promotion that he's receiving as well. Yeah. If you can't fucking muster up a picture for box rec, Jesus well, Christ. Well, one of the guys that he beat is a man named Kevin McCauley, who has... 15 wins, 190 losses, and 12 draws. That must be close to one of the worst records in active boxers, I would have thought. So his record is 15 wins, 199 losses, and 12 draws. You know, he shouldn't still be allowed to fight. You should be saying that someone has been beaten that many times. Like you, you, no more. No mass. No. You should have like a, like a cap. Right. You have like 50 fight, fifty losses, like whatever. You say like you've been beaten 50 times, that's it. Yeah. This isn't working for you. Do something else. Stop destroying your brain. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, he's uh, like, this guy's a proper, like, you know, he's got three page box wreck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. So he, he's a proper journeyman, right? These guys, uh, to be fair, these guys are the guys that like keep boxing ticking over, but. You know, just get, just to give you a little insight into into where that guy that guy's level is, um, you know. So yeah. so it's not it's not big, it's not clever. Is there something? One of the fights is approaching competitive. Uh, Craig Glover versus Chris Billum Smith. Now, indeed, and this is one that I am actually quite excited for. If I'm honest, right? Um, I don't know if, if our listeners remember, but Chris Billum Smith had a blinding fight with Richard Riakapur. I do remember that. Yeah, and, uh, which he, it was it was a slightly contentious, no, that he lost. Yeah, and I, I in, in all honesty, I think I, I thought that Chris Billum Smith did enough to pick uh, to to mm-hmm. pick it, like to take it, but it was a split decision. Really tested Riakapur, um, and and possibly in some people's eyes mm-hmm. won. So this is uh, against Craig Glover for like a vacant uh, cruiserweight title, uh, British British Empire cruiserweight mm-hmm. title. So you know, just some Imagine sort of make one title. Up, make one up for short one. But yeah, the the odds are though, I would again say that there's a good chance that Chris Billum Smith pips this, simply based on the fact that Craig Glover d- again does not have a box rec photo. <laughs> So he's he's got his ten ten wins, two losses, no box rec photo. It it does say a lot about a particular fighter, especially when one of his wins comes from a man who's uh had three wins, fifty one <laughs> losses and three draws. So the the, the bookies have this about a sort of sixty five, thirty five, sixty forty type type kind of positioning. Mm-hmm. So so it should be competitive, but I would have thought based on based on your profoundly detailed analysis that we would we we would strongly <laughs> favour uh, maybe even more so than that Chris Billum Smith. And yeah, absolutely. in terms of the undercard, finally we have uh, James Tennyson versus Craig Evans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Again, uh, you know, I think this could be. Uh, I think this is probably one. Of, I think this is the pick and fight of the night, actually. Um, you know, looking at both of their records, uh, you know, it's pretty much for a muchness, similar amount of losses, um, you know, similar, similar, um, uh, what'd you call it? Uh, similar kind of, uh, uh, fight background, people who they fought. Um, so I, I think that this could actually possibly be a, be a bit of a pick and fight. Uh, I'm gonna say I uh, fairly strongly disagree with you, just on the basis. Yeah. Oh really? Why is the that? Basis of the odds. <laughs> what? Are, what are the, the odds? Are saying that um, Tennyson's a strong favorite. You get maybe, f- yeah, he's like an eighty twenty mm. favorite to win. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm. He did. He did fight Tevin he, Farmer. He did and fight lose. Tevin Farmer and lose, which is kind of like. I don't know. 
it's not particularly helpful. He also fought. He also lost against uh, Ryan Walsh back in the well three years ago. Yeah. Mm. Maybe that's a bit lot. Maybe that's a bit short for him. Maybe that maybe the odds should be a bit closer. I think it is a bit short. I think it's a lot. I think it could be a lot. Okay, well you go. You go. Than, you go for than, Evans. Than I'll go for record. Tennyson. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> By the same um, approach, would you yeah. would you care to choose John Ryder in the main event versus Calum Smith? <laughs> <laughs> no chance, man. Yeah, let's talk about this, right? Mr. Big Man, Callum Smith against John Ryder. Oh my days. Now, like I think that I think that this is a shame. Um, because I would much rather see Callum Smith fighting someone at a much higher level than than John mm-hmm. Ryder. You know, um I, I get this is that kind of like homecoming thing because it's in the Echo Arena in Liverpool. It's like a full Liverpudlian like card pretty much, isn't it? Um so I understand why they've done it, but I think actually I guess we had that one tick over fight on the Anthony Joshua undercard, the kind of reintroduction thing. And now we've got this, like, you know, for Callum Smith, once he bowls through John Ryder on Saturday mm-hmm. night, um, I would very, very much hope that he's calling out like Canelo. He's calling out, you know, Golovkin. He's, he's you know, he, he's pushing the boundaries of who he can fight. He wants to fight someone at a decent level. You know, I don't want to see him fighting fucking Hassan and Dam again. I want him fighting see, someone. I, yeah, like, I, I agree with you, but I think, I think the reality is that Hassan and Dam is a is like by a f- couple of levels like a higher level fighter than John Ryder. So that's the kind of thing. It's like yeah. I, I mean, he beat him so comprehensively. He looked so good destroying mm-hmm. him that this feels like it feels mm-hmm. like a formality. Not to John Ryder though. Uh, like John John Ryder lost to Rocky Fielding for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just kind of tells you a little bit about about well, his, he, his level. He, his argument know? is he's kind of been like you know uh, undergone a, a a rebuild or a renaissance since then. But yeah, I do take the point, and I I I, I really can't see any way in which the fight's going to be competitive. It's such a stretch to see that he's going to be able to live with him for more than a few rounds. I know. He's just. I know. In your words, Ryan, Calm Smith is just so big. He is, man. He's just so goddamn big. So much power he's so goddamn frame big as well. That's the thing. That's the frightening thing for opponents. But and he makes it look so effortless. Like he doesn't look like he's punching people hard mm-hmm. as well, which is the thing that yeah, amazes he's, he's, me. He, he doesn't look like he's putting loads into his punches. It's just that's so the effortless. Thing. It's easy power, isn't it? It looks really easy power. Mm-hmm. I mean, Riders. Uh, yeah, he stopped stopped his last four opponents. Jamie Cox had heard of Andre Sorokin, obviously, and uh, I don't know some other ones. Do you know them? Bilal Akwe. Don't really know. Mm-hmm. Him. Can't remember who he is. Anyway, I don't know. I just he's giving up. He's giving away like six inches. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, I, I don't mm-hmm. think he's going to get close to him. I, uh, yeah. I w- it's never good when you're giving away six inches, Andy. How much more have you got to give away? I mean, come on. <laughs> I know. I just, uh, I don't know. I can't see it being anything other than a very short, very comprehensive um, de- annihilation. I really, and yeah, I think everyone's begging Cam Smith. The very least he should try and do is fight another of the super middleweight belt holders, all of which I think he would he would have the beating of. Not maybe not even mm-hmm. that competitively, but at least it would be interesting. Mm. But the thing is, I don't think Canelo goes anywhere near Callum Smith. I think he avoids Callum Smith like the fucking he's plague. Got any sense because the risk reward ratio is yeah. totally off. Like no one's gonna, no yeah. one like stateside are gonna know just like how good he is, and uh, and he's like a lot less, you know in decline compared to Kovalev yeah. he's, he's not like an aging sort of spent alcoholic Kovalev he's like this <laughs> massive man that generates a massive amount of power in his absolute prime so yeah he's not going to go I don't, I'd don't. i be amazed if Canelo went near him totally and I think that's maybe one of the struggles 
for Calvin Smith is to find someone who's willing yeah, to fight. I think him he just has to try and belt. fight belts. But I mean, I, I, if I were one of the other super middles, other super middle champions, maybe Benavidez would fancy it. He's kind of a warrior type. He's a mm. big man as well. But mm. like, I don't see who the other ones plant or um, mm-hmm. who's the other one? Uh, Anthony Jarrell, Jure- Caleb Plant. Oh, BJS. Fucking hell! Of course it's BJS. Jeez. BJS, isn't it? It's BJS. <clears throat> so, and and I don't, well, BGS is being lined up to fight fucking Canelo, isn't he? Well, I, th- I think it's much you know, more for the, that he fights that that Canelo fights him rather than that he fights, yeah. Yeah. So, Plant, ben, Benavidez, Benavidez or Plant, eh, they're they're both all right. I don't know. I think he would beat them both. Mm. I, he would be a strong favorite to beat either of them, but maybe maybe them would would fancy mm. it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. BGS mm-hmm. would be a big fight in the UK. I don't I, on on current on current performance. It, BGS would get destroyed. I think. Yeah, I I don't think he takes that fight. Don't think he takes that fight. No, I don't think it's probably in 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 Matchroom's plan for him. Matchroom have totally signed him up to fight Canelo mm-hmm. because you know he's got a belt. He's relatively known, and Canelo destroys him. Yeah, unless he can. Unless he has some yeah. miraculous kind of career turnaround, which looks increasingly <clears throat> unlikely. But um, so, yeah. oh, prediction. Let's before we before we leave it. What do what do you think, Smith Rider prediction? I'm just going to say which round, which which uh, round? third round. Cam Smith in the third round. I will give Ryder the benefit of the doubt, and I will say fourth. Ooh. Okay. Fourth. Okay. Right. Well. Live on Fox Pay Per View and Sky Sports, live from Las Vegas, Wilder vs. Ortiz. <laughs> <laughs> now then, oh, by the way, this um, the price point in the US, I think for this is seventy five dollars. So cheap. It's cheap in the states, actually. Well, it's all relative. I mean, because it's usually like a hundred dollars, isn't it? I think it varies from yeah. I mean, I think that's mm-hmm. sort of at the more towards the lower end of what they charge for pay per views. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's still expensive mm-hmm. though. It's a lot of money, is it? It is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Um, the fight that nobody really wanted to see. I want to see it a little bit. Not the most, but I want, I to want see it. it a bit. First fight was great. First fight was know. exciting. The first fight was very good. The first fight was very good. But I just, as much as I really would hope Ortiz wins, I just don't see it. I, I, by the way, have you read this thing about Wilder saying that he's come up with the super punch that he's going to hit Ortiz with? No. no. Right? That apparently, like, he's, he's, he's worked on this super punch that comes from, like, a particular angle that generates even more power. So he's going to try it on Ortiz. I think Deontay Wilder is a bit deficient, you know. <laughs> like, like he's got a special move now. Do you know what I mean? Like out of a fucking video game or something. It's just a shame he can't start the boxing match like fully clothed and then he can just like burst open his shirt and have like a super Deontay symbol and then be like, da da da. <laughs> Oh, I know, right? A I super know. punch. I know. You wouldn't have thought he was such a pioneer of like cutting edge boxing science, would you, when you hear him speak? But there you go, he is. There a we super. go. There we go. And I don't think anybody has ever looked at Deontay Wilder and gone, oh yeah, no, he's put a lot of thought about his technique <laughs> and the angles in order to, to derive that power. Oh, I just... I, you know, even though Ortiz is like, a wild drugs cheat you know like really you know a, a kind of unrepentant drugs cheat um there's so many failed tests and stuff i still kind of mm-hmm. hope he wins because you know i talked we talked about this like a long time ago saying um mm-hmm. we said the last undefeated heavyweight champion was um rocky marciano that was the last time it happened. Yes. Because the, the, because yes. there's such a random element. And if you think... And then we looked at, obviously, Joshua just got beat. Fury mm-hmm. could have lost early in his career. He could have lost against Wallen. If the... You know, any other doctor, any other referee just wave that off, don't they? 
Um, he could have mm-hmm, been ca- mm-hmm. he could have like been stopped immediately without the referee counting versus versus Wilder. Mm-hmm. Wilder should have lost that on points if it carried on though. He'd been like rocked really badly by Ortiz, could have got knocked out, etc. etc. So they're always like living on the cusp, which is the nature of the sport, and like they will all get beaten, and it would just be more. I think once the unbeaten records go for uh, for Fury and for Wilder, which they will, then I think things become because the, 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 there's this less the sense of guarding them. Do you know what I mean? And it's yes. just like, do you yes. know what? Let's just make big fights. Let's just make big fights now. So I think it's more... And like, oh yeah, Wilder obviously got knocked down and stuff. He's been like clipped around a good few times in his early stages of his career even by like journeyman nearly. Uh, yeah, but you'll <laughs> never find it on the internet. <laughs> um, so it'll just be better when it happens. And if you keep, if you keep having fights where you're an 80% favourite, you only have to have like... If you do the math, you do. Th- if you have three of those, then you're like less than mm-hmm. a fifty-fifty to have won them all. If you see what I mean, yeah. So that's the way yeah, that yeah, the yeah. probabilities work. So like, you know, you 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 keep fighting eighty percent favorite fights. You're gonna you eventually you're gonna get beat unless you're incredibly lucky, and it would just be better when they do. I don't know. Ortiz is older, and obviously it was like a kind of gassing issue he had last time. So you think is there a likelihood he's going to be better conditioned this time he's got this new conditioning coach guy that's worked with some high quality like work with Sean Porter and stuff and he's saying he's, he's in better shape mm. and he seems a lot of chat about him being slimmed down you, yeah really? a lot of chat about Ortiz being like slimmed down and bulked up at the same time so yeah has he been working with Alberto <laughs> Salazar by any chance <laughs> that was his name I'd forgotten his name because he's he's been at work recently that's why he's picked him up yeah that's why he's picked him up he's going oh fuck Uh, so we'll we'll see but I hope it's not just a complete bust I hope it's not just like a two three round while they knocks him out I hope it's competitive but I mean I, maybe it's just wishful thinking part of me thinks maybe maybe Ortiz can do it Wilder is super vulnerable anytime he's gone up against anyone with you know with some kind of uh, punch power, you know, he's often been wobbled. He has, but the problem is that Luis Ortiz is 67 years old, right? If he hadn't fucked about... Like, realistically, he's in his 50s. Realistically, he's in his 50s. his 50s. I don't know. I think there's a good chance he's older than 40. I don't think he's 50. What, no one knows. It's interesting though because you think if he hadn't fucked about so much um, and doing the failing the drug tests and rebuilding etc cetera, etc, cetera, if he'd fought him like was it probably about five years ago when he was when he destroyed mm-hmm. um, Jennings and you think if if that mm-hmm. Ortiz had fought Wilder now he'd pr- you know he'd be at least he'd, he'd be at least a fifty fifty if not you know more if he can do this well against him yeah. at forty or fifty or however old he is five years ago he would have been like probably as good a chance as any to beat him but mm-hmm. not the way it works so what are you going for there are uh, there are other, a couple other fights in the card to mention but what, what's your prediction so my my prediction is that Wilder knocks him out in the 8th round okay I'm gonna say just for funsies and I might put a fiver on it uh, Ortiz is gonna stop him Stop him in the stop him in the middle rounds. Let's say in the middle. Let's say okay. In, just okay. Stop him in six. You you do realize that if your prediction comes true, the whole world of heavyweight boxing is going to explode <laughs> in terms of the way the fights work out in the future. No, I know, and I think that like everyone will ask me for a prediction first, but I think it will be. I think probably on my part is wishful thinking. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm keen. What I really what I okay. really should do is put money on that because if that if that comes mm-hmm. to pass and I've not put money on it, I'm going to feel... You'll kick yourself. Uh, exactly, yeah. Uh, exact method of victory. Let me just check. Yeah, I'd li- I'd, it'd be very interesting to know what those, those odds are because, uh, you know... The one thing that does upset upset me is actually I never think that boxing odds are very good when you bet. Like I always think you get shit odds no matter what you pick. 
Um, well, we we can I can explain but, why that's an odd thing to say off air if you like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know, like sometimes you pick like quite random shit to happen, and it's like, okay. You know, you still don't Ortiz to win in the sixth round. I can get fifty three to one. Really, that's mate. Put a fiver, <laughs> a fiver on that. I know we'll be broadcasting next week from the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but 250 <laughs> quid. Yeah, uh, 53. That's really good. I like it. That's like really it. good. Might might put a couple of bob on that. You heard it here first, listeners. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I think Do it's it. just. I think it's wishful it. thinking on my part, but never mind. Um, Brandon Figueroa versus Julio Seja. So, super bad yes. contest co-main event and his debut at Super Feather Leo Santa Cruz the mercurial Leo Santa Cruz mm. versus Miguel Flores in a fight he's uh, expected to, to win but it is for one of the uh, marbles WBA super marbles okay. if you like but whatever well then let us move on to our newest segment, oh, The Six Degrees of Danny Williams. Are you going to forget that we do this? I don't, because I, I love it. I love it so much. And this week, I have a real special one, right? That I'm pretty sure, unless you've been brushing up on Danny Williams' record, you're never going to get it. But it's really super interesting at the same time. Okay. okay? This week, I want you to get from... John Fury to Danny Williams. Fuck off. <laughs> yes. Go and stick your head down a fucking toilet. And I'm going to tell you that you can do it in two steps. What are you talking about? There's, <laughs> there's, only, there's only one fighter between Danny Williams and John Fury. I wasn't even that sure that he f- <laughs> he fought professional. I didn't even know he fought professional. He did. He did. He he had thirteen bouts. Gypsy John Fury. He had thirteen bouts, eight knockouts, and four losses, and one draw. So when he says about battering people, he does mean it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Not like Dana White talks about fighting people. Like he's actually serious. This guy's like, ah, no. Yeah, he's, he's actually, he's actually serious. Did he yeah. did he stop boxing because he was in jail? I think that was that was it. I think he did go to jail. I, well, he, he, and I think it may definitely went did. to jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I think it might have put like a bit of a a hold on his boxing career. <laughs> the whole being in jail. <laughs> No, I think it probably jail. changed his boxing career from being like a out of bo- out of jail boxing career to being like an in jail no one's fighting me because I'm so good at boxing kind of boxing career. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's a big mm-hmm. man. You wouldn't mess with him, would you? I think he was probably in charge of the jail. Do you reckon? I think he probably was actually. Was he not like a? He was he? What was it he did? Was it not? Was he not rumoured to be that he was a drug dealer in jail and stuff? Was there not a lot of chat? About yeah, um, I think there's. I think there's a lot of things that he got involved in. Um, I think he, he he once gouged a man's eye out in a brawl. That's fair game. <laughs> 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 to be honest, who hasn't done that? Whenever I get in a brawl, I, I know. go for the eye gouge. Yeah, I think he. I think he was a. Like a drug baron and all sorts of stuff. Like I think he got, I think he got involved in some pretty fucking rough mm-hmm. things. Like started with the bare knuckle so, boxing. Yeah. Anyway, I suppose it's slightly off topic, isn't it? Yeah. So that's why he was in jail for gouging the man's eye. Yeah. Jeez. That's uh, left him half blind. Yeah, eleven eleven year prison sentence. Jeez. 
Um, okay, so I tell you what, I don't know it, so I looked up while we were talking, I looked up uh, John Fury's record on Box Rec, and I'm pretty sure the only one that he's fought that I've heard of will be the right one. Credit for having done this. Okay. There was no way I was going to get it, because I didn't know anyone John Fury fought. Okay, and who who Henry you say think it was? No, no, actually, oh, it's sake. it's Michael I Murray. Can't even cheat and get it right, right? <laughs> I can't even cheat and get it right. Michael Murray. So he fought he fought Michael Murray, who uh, also fought uh, Danny Williams early in Danny well, Williams' I career. Never. I know, right? What f- I tell you, man, this man is connected, right? He's <laughs> not like John Fury's connected, but he's connected, right? So, well, let us move on then to what the F went wrong last week. Oh, I've got a couple of things for yeah. you. Right. So we made quite a song and dance about why we're why was no one uh, proper picking up the. Um, McGregor for it. Yes, we did. Yeah, and it turns out that the, well, I I don't know if it was on an actual channel, but certainly you could go on the iPlayer app on the TV or on the computer, mm-hmm. and you could watch it with the BBC doing the production. So they did actually pick it up to some degree or another. I don't know if it was on any TV channels, but certainly it was mm-hmm. it was available for the old mm-hmm. watching. Mm-hmm. So our bad. Mm-hmm. We said it was on YouTube, which I assume in some it was IFL was. TV. Oh, yeah, really? IFL TV, we're covering it. Oh, well, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but certainly it was on one form or another on BBC. Yes. Yes, it was. So, not bad. Um, also, the something strange happened at some point during the episode to the volume levels. Oh, really? Yeah, there's. It seemed to kind of like go off a cliff a little bit, and then it, it, the rest of the episode carried on at like a lower level. Mm, all right, okay. I need to pay more attention, maybe when I'm when I'm when I'm editing. <laughs> the, Ted probably jumped on the keyboard at that probably point. Did little bastard. <laughs> Can't work under these conditions, and. It was just kind of your pronunciation, but it was very funny. So we were talking about Billy Joe Saunders. You said Billy Joel <laughs> rather than Can't help Joe. it. I can't help it. Every time. Every time. <laughs> just love that. Love those songs. Um, that's what I had for What the F Went Wrong. Right. Well, let us move into a random news. Um, now, have you seen, by the way, the price of the Joshua Ruiz fight here in the UK. No, I forgot to write this down as one of the talking mm-hmm. points for the episode, but actually I remember just as we kind of dialed on to start that yes, I I, rem- I was going to mention it because yes, I have seen this and th- there's been something of a backlash about this. 24.99. Yeah, it's heftier. It is hefty. Now, okay, it's what's 5 pound increase from usual. It's usually what 1999. Yeah, it's gone only twenty quid. Yeah. You know, twenty yeah. quid. Yeah, uh, it's hefty, man. It is really hefty, actually. Now they are like fucking about with stuff. So the ring walk in the UK is going to be like similar time, like normal time. So it means like mm-hmm. they're going to be doing their ring walk at like one a.m. You can three or four hours. You, is, it? is it four hours? Yeah, three. And plus, like, and it's going to be like mid afternoon time for like people in the states and stuff. Yeah, it's terrible for it's terrible for that. Oh man, and you know what? Like, imagine being a professional athlete and having to like go out and try and perform at one a.m. in the morning. I know. You know, it's pretty grim. So it's three hours, right? And three hours ahead. Three hours, okay. Uh huh. So if it's nine, it's going to be midnight. It is late. I mean, it's not unprecedented. There are there have been you know. Uh, Joe Calzaghe did, did it, mid- didn't he? When he, when he fought. Um, uh, Roy Jones Jr. in Cardiff. Uh, the proper that was proper middle of the yeah. night stuff, wasn't it? Yeah. But I mean, I, I guess a lot of the times, you know, in the UK, they're fighting at. They come out at eleven, don't they? Oh no, um, half ten, something like that. I think. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, okay, for a ring walk, yeah. So you're speaking an hour and a half. Yeah. It's not I mean, it's not ideal. I don't know. Maybe they'll manage. I get, well, I'm sure they'll manage. I think they're going to have to, like... You'd have to, like, change your sleep pattern, wouldn't you? I would assume that these guys, for yeah, for days and days leading up to it, would have to be um, going to bed late and getting up. Like, I, I just... I don't know if you've ever read it, but there's, there's a, a really interesting book called... Um, why do we sleep? No. I oh man, uh, it is. I like. I highly recommend. Uh, mend, uh, recommend it. Um, mm-hmm. It's called Why We Sleep. Um, it's by a guy named Matthew Walker, and like the the body's like has has natural t- points where it wants to go to sleep by releasing like hormones mm-hmm. and stuff. And, like, it's one of the reasons why you get so fucked up when you travel uh, long, you know, long distances. It actually takes a long time for your body to, like, change the way it produces the hormones. So, actually, uh-huh. like, these guys, unless they're, like, really looking at the way that they're sleeping and changing their sleep patterns and, like, using, I don't know, like, so, something to, to, to block that, are not going to be like peak performance at that time because actually their body's going to be like, I want to go to bed. Ah, but here's the kicker. He can just, the, what he used to do is just keep on a UK sleep pattern mm-hmm. for when he goes over, for the whole time he goes over. Do yeah. You know I mean? Like, don't account for the fact that it's three hours ahead. Just keep on your, your, your natural rhythm and then you would be kind of reasonably all right. So... So although he's going to bed at like one or two in Saudi, that's you do that because that's in line with your ten or eleven yeah. in the UK sort of. Yeah, thing. I, so he's just got to do. He's got to do that. I yeah, guess. I think they probably do need to take on some sort of sleep consultant for this problem for this thing. To be honest, it'll be worse for uh, worse for Ruiz. Oh it? yeah, totally, totally. It's like a massive difference. You know, it's gonna be like inverted. It's gonna be like. <laughs> It's going to be like 10 hours or something ahead of <laughs> nine, eight or nine hours. Yeah. It's going to be really difficult. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, so, that's that. Um, now, Anthony Joshua's been getting mouthy recently. Y- yeah, yeah. He, he has. He's been putting it, uh, having a bit of chat, saying that, like, I think he's getting a bit annoyed. He's getting a bit, he's getting a bit grumpy. Uh, but all but all Ru- Ruiz spouting off and stuff. So he's mm-hmm. saying um, everyone's gonna have to bow to him when he when he beats Ruiz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you bow, you bow to me. So we'll see. Exactly. We'll see if he wins the fight first. Ruiz has been saying it wasn't a fluke. Joshua's Joshua knocking him down was a fluke, and he's gonna beat him again and show that he's true champion. Mm. Uh, should we talk about uh, Ryan Martin, most famously known by getting beat off of Joshua Taylor? Yeah. Now, we should. he has been handed a four-year ban for failing his drug test um, following the fight with Josh Taylor. Um, he was he tested positives for metabolites of testosterone after the fight. <clears throat> now, a like obviously like UCAD are fucking hard, right? They ban motherfuckers and they're just banned. So like he was he must have been under UCAD because the fight was in the UK. But mm-hmm. I don't. Does that mean that he can just fight in the states though, or is he banned from the sport? I don't understand how that is administered. Is he just not allowed well, to fight in the UK for four years? So the, I, I had the exact... My thought process was exactly the same as yours. But from what I can read and what I understand, the the ban is, is international. The ban applies all over. It's not just a... It's not just a ban from, from fighting in the UK because that would kind of be, like, meaningless. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But my understanding is, no, the, the ban is... Um, applies all over. Fuck, man. That's his career done, like. Mm-hmm. What a flash in the pan that fucking guy was. Yeah. You know? Fuck. He tested positive as part of VADA's testing program connected to the WBC mm-hmm. boxing program. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Unless I'm missing something, and and maybe one of our listeners could correct if if we are. My understanding is is that the the ban doesn't just apply. Um, in the UK, and it's it's a it's a ban that will apply everywhere. So I don't think he would be granted a license anywhere, especially if it was to do with um part of Vada's testing. And he tested positive as part of Vada's testing. So I think that's him goosed. I think he's done. Fuck man, he's over. He's absolutely over. You know. It seems like disproportionately harsh compared to some of the other bands that have been handed it. That's the thing. I don't understand why he gets four years, right? And a lot of other fighters get nowhere near it. They get like six months. Four years seems almost unheard of for a first-time offence versus what other people are getting, like you're saying. Mm-hmm. I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe there'll be like ways to like appeal it or work around it or somehow it won't apply globally. I don't know. My understanding is just now that it applies everywhere but um maybe there'll be some form of appeal or reduction or something like that and maybe get reduced or something mm-hmm. so because mm. we like he, he doesn't have a career that's that's career if if it's a four-year global van global van then that's him done isn't it yeah i mean and he said that this is because of like supplements mm-hmm. this is this is a this is a well-trodden path yeah, to say yeah that, it doesn't it? work so, does not work <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, it doesn't, because he, ah, uh, yeah, anyway, he's, he's fucked. He's fucked it. Um, so, uh, talking about bands, mm. Dillian White, possibly fighting on the AJ Ruiz undercard. What the actual fuck, how is this even possible? I don't understand <laughs> it. I don't understand it. Um... I don't understand how it can be a baby. Uh, yeah, I know. I know what you mean. At this stage of proceedings, how can it be a maybe? How can it be like two and a half weeks out and it's maybe he will fight? I don't know. I don't get it. And I don't... Uh, yeah, and obviously all the stuff about this, there seems to have been no public conclusion to all the, all the stuff hanging over him with regards to... I think because there must be like... To the drugs test. He must not be suspended while the investigation is going on. No, well, clearly, yeah, but it's kind of like I don't know. How would they not have announced? I don't. I don't really understand why at this point it's not a yes. He's definitely fighting, or a no, he's not. Why would it be? He, he would need to be going in it in a few days. <laughs> I know. I know. He needs a hotel for goodness' sake. What if the hotels are all full? I know. I know. Crazy. So there we go. Um, it's. It's an odd one. Um, it is. Yeah. Other random news, Jaime Munguia. Oh, what's he done? Uh, nothing. He's fighting. He's debuting at middleweight in January against Spike O'Sullivan. Who's Spike O'Sullivan? You know who Spike O'Sullivan is. Um, he is. He's a funny-looking boxer who... Has been beaten quite a lot. Eubank beat him. Ah, right, okay. And BJS beat him. He's kind of got a bald head and then these like really impressive sideburns. So he's quite distinctive and he's got quite good chat. Ah, I know who you're he's, talking about. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and he wears like flamboyant shoes and and and, and uh, shorts and stuff. But he's not particularly good at boxing. Gary O'Sullivan's his actual name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got like a he has a funny tash mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's fighting. Mungia at lightweight. Um, Lemieux knocked him out in a round. That's right. Like uh, last year. Says a lot. Says a lot. Um, has he beaten anyone of note? Not really. He lost to Eubank to Billy Joe Saunders to Lemieux. Le- yeah, I remember watching the Eubank fight him and that was like a kind of novice Eubank. Eubank absolutely schooled him. So. Just danced around him. Um, yeah, he's not. He's not great. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. Monkey is debut- debuting at middleweight. It's been confirmed. What else? Lomachenko has been given it a bit of chat. He has, and do you know what? He's saying what everybody is thinking. <laughs> I know, I know. But Lomachenko can say it because he's Lomachenko. Absolutely, he is calling Canelo out on not picking Beterbiev or Bivol. 
which we have done on this program on countless occasions. Yeah, we checked with Lomachenko first. We're like, Loma, do you think that? And he's like, yes, guys, it's okay. We're like, okay, we'll do it. Exactly. Exactly. He has. He actually has an editorial stake <laughs> in uh, editorial influence in boxing and rap podcast production. He does. He does. He does not, for the record, <laughs> officially. Not officially. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, he's been having a dig at Canelo and saying everyone knew that Kovalev was a good fighter, but that he's past his prime and in decline. And if Canelo really wanted to fight the best of the best at light heavy, he would have fought, as you said, mm-hmm. Bivol mm-hmm. or Viterbi. Mm-hmm. But he, he clearly chose not to. Um, he also, in other news, has denied be asking to be made franchise champion. Yeah, I Which saw is, that. Is, did you see that? Yeah. yeah. But I don't know if... I, I don't know, what, do you think the WBC just go, no, it actually works better for us, so, sorry. See, I... I, I don't think, I'm, well, I, I don't really have a huge amount of reason. To, if I was choosing who do I think is more likely to be telling the truth, mm-hmm. uh, Lomachenko or Suleiman, mm-hmm. Marisa Suleiman, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I would probably say nine times out of ten, I would believe <laughs> Yeah, totally, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> So, so uh, Mauricio Suleiman says that he did ask to be made champion and Lomachenko said, no, 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 I did not ask to be made champion. You gave me belt for champion. I didn't ask. You gave me and I said, okay. <laughs> so, who do you believe? That's the question. I know. I know. Um, the, the shit show in the making, Danny Jacobs versus Chavez, mm-hmm. the fight that was moved to avoid in a... In a commission picking exercise because Chavez refused went nah 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 you ain't getting my piss to the Vada tester in Vegas mm-hmm. uh, and then it was moved to Arizona yes uh, uh, to try and avoid or somehow to try and uh, reinstate the fight so apparently this is now up in the air again as to whether or not the suspension will be bypassable by the commission picking which is supposed to be illegal that they're attempting to do uh, and maybe that fight won't get to go ahead as well. Mm-hmm. So it's apparently it's, it's back in jeopardy. Is the latest news I have on that one. Well, so it fucking should be, to be honest. <laughs> it's a shit show. It's a shit show. Um, any other random news you want to mention? Or? One last thing, Andy. Go right? on. Go uh, on. This this mm-hmm. just in uh, from Tony King on Facebook. Um, uh-huh. He's told us that we've got a bit of competition, Andy. Uh, impossible, but go uh, on. Yeah, there's there's also um, another boxing podcast uh, that's as understated about its, its ability as we are. Oh, really? Yeah, it's been started by Carl Frock. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Frock. Does not have the same level of balance. That we of have. course, he doesn't. I, like, but he might. He might have a bigger ready-made uh, following. He might do, uh, especially because he's like forcing his wife to listen to it. But like, uh, I, I, I obviously haven't listened to it yet. I imagine it's just him talking about who he'd beat for like an hour. You know, yeah, beat him. I definitely beat him. I definitely beat him. I've already beaten him. I beat him in front of eighty thousand at Wembley. I think that's kind of like what it's going to be like. You know, I think it's going to be like the world of boxing through the eyes of Carl Frock, <laughs> where 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 Carl Frock is the sun and everything else is like revolving slowly around Carl. Totally. Frock. Like he doesn't have like he's not like a flat earther he's like a Carl Frocker he just believes like <laughs> everything revolves around him he creates gravity oh, he's such a humble man he is indeed so humble so why don't you tell me first what grinds my gears this week. absolutely tell me, I'll tell, tell you what week. grinds tell me what grinds tell me what grinds the gears you know what really grinds my I gears I will tell you Andy and it is mm-hmm. this fucking billion white situation is what <laughs> grinds my gears this week. Because it makes absolutely no sense. Like one, you know, on one side of the coin, we've got Ryan Martin, who's failed a drugs test and is banned for four years. Um, and then you mm-hmm. have Dillian White, who's like 
there's some sort of drugs testing issue that he's failed and mm-hmm. is now possibly fighting um, in Saudi Arabia in a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't understand it because where does the WBC come in in all this? Because obviously they've knocked him down from uh, the mandatory challenger to like not even in it at the moment. He's like put, you know, put a pin in him for, for you know, uh-huh. while the investigations uh-huh. are going on. So if he's still active as a professional boxer, how does this work with that? Is, is he now the mandatory again? You know, there's just so many fucking questions that doesn't seem um, to work for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and I'm I'm very confused, and I think that people need clarity on this um, because it's also a bit strange that if he ends up with some sort of ban, so what happens then? Is he going to get like? You know, because usually if you fail a drugs test, you're not allowed to participate in the in your sport while ongoing investigations are happening, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You're like suspended mm-hmm. from that sport. So how does this work with Dillian White going over to Saudi? Is this because actually UCAD are throwing all of this out the window or he's actually served like a short ban in secret? Because... The thing is, with with it being UCAD and this being his second offence, you know it would be like a four year ban or longer. Because your second mm-hmm. offence, you you get really fucked over, don't you, by UCAD? So uh, this, I'm just really, really, really confused, actually, and I don't, I don't think it's good for Dillian White. I definitely don't think it's good for Matchroom because. If he if it does come out, let's say he's failed for some sort of, you know, ste- steroid or whatever, that, you know, then it, there's flack on Eddie Hearn for letting this drugs cheat fight on the undercard of the, um, of the AJ Ruiz fight. It's it's all very strange if you ask me. Mm-hmm. Agree. You know, so so that's what grinds my gears this week, Andy. I agree. You know, it's just, it's a shit show. Yeah, it's a really, it's just very odd. There's just, it's just a st- strange sequence of events, really, isn't well, it? Well, and the thing is, from Matchroom's point of view, why are you saying anything until it's completely clear? You know? What, it, it's going to be a takeover fight, which he could do like a few weeks later. So why, why, is, why is he fighting on this card? Why are they kind of rushing it through to fight on this card when there's like so much uncertainty about it? It just it creates more questions. Unless it seems like they're trying to rush it through so that he can make some money before he's out for two years. <laughs> you know? Sure. Because when you're that. like a drugs ban, you know, when you're banned from the sport, a lot of times you're not allowed to have anything to do with the sport right so like you're not you wouldn't be he wouldn't be allowed to be a promoter or a trainer or anything like that you know Mm -hmm. you're like totally persona non grata um so the the best he could hope for would be a like some sort of commentary role but who in their right mind is going to put him on tv when he's serving a drugs ban i know well yeah that's true They'll be like, um, so what's going on? He's like, yeah, there's nothing. I'm just uh, still banned for drugs. What? <laughs> exactly. So it's all a strange one. Um, so do you want to tell me what grinds your gears this week, Andy? You know what really grinds my gears? Yeah, y- y- you made reference to it already, but I think... I-, I-, I was trying to think about how much this bothered me, and in terms of like how it will affect my behaviour, it won't. And that's the point why it's allowed is that the the box office event for the Joshua Ruiz fight is going to be twenty five quid. I'm just yeah. I can't work out in my mind. I'm trying to think how long I've been watching stuff on pay per view, and how the price has escalated so like so far ahead of inflation. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming they do some like 
some modelling or some analysis, or they'll look back on the previous times they've put the price up and gone, do you know what? Um, the people paying for it are not sensitive enough. They're not particularly sensitive to price movements. Therefore, mm -hmm. overall, this will be more revenue mm -hmm. maximising. So obviously, the, the, they're not doing it just to piss people off. They're doing it because they calculate that, that you'll you'll gain more in the extra £5 than you will in terms of the drop-off of customers who won't buy it at 25 mm -hmm. that would have bought it at 20 I know I'm, I'm, I know I'm saying totally obvious stuff, mm -hmm. but th th there will be a calculation behind it to say it's going to make X percent more money at this point mm -hmm. uh, versus, you know, the criticism that we're going to get for it. Therefore... It's worthwhile doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I just, I think it's like, I guess it's like everything's going that way. It's like, you know, I guess traditional, what are traditional working class sports um, becoming expensive to the point where they're putting off a good proportion of people that maybe would be interested in them. Like, it's the same as happened with football and to a startling degree. Like, how expect, especially, well... Scotland's a bit different. It's still expensive, but you know, like Premier League uh, tickets in England, football tickets in England are like astronomically expensive. Aren't they? Yes. Um, you know, it's like f they're frighteningly expensive. If you were to take like a family, you're speaking like hundreds of pounds and stuff to go to a football match, which is kind of absurd and kind of very far from what it was supposed to be about, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I know it's just watching the TV, and I know for a lot of people, twenty five quid is not like. You know, it's not a spectacular amount of money, but it just feels like quite uh, it getting to a point of of kind of being gratuitous, really. Well, it is. And it is. You know, let's say for instance, you know, your Sky subscription broadband phone, all that kind of shit is like, let's say forty forty quid a month, right? Uh, fifty quid a month, mm -hmm. and then what? You're throwing on an extra twenty quid, so you you know, then you know. Then you're rather than paying, you know, forty quid, you're paying uh, sixty quid a month. Do you know what I mean? Because you, you mm -hmm. there seems to be almost like a pay per view every month now as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know it, mm -hmm. it, and now this one's twenty five quid. It's fucking Christmas time as well. Uh, it's a real fucking mm -hmm. ball ache. Actually, it is expensive. Do you know what I mean? There would ha there would have to be. And, and I'm obviously I'm guilty of this, there would have to be enough people that kind of balk at paying it for them then to go, actually, we've lost more than we've gained by putting and it And there would have to be so this, many. There would have to be, like, there would have to be a mass boycott. Well, you, but to be honest, though, you wouldn't have to have, like, the, if you, the, the math, you, you, you have to lose, like, what is it, like a quarter or a fifth of people to then not be any better off by doing it do you know what i mean mm -hmm. so if it, so if the drop-off rate's like 20 percent would it be 20 percent 20 percent 25 percent drop-off rate something like that you, you then get back to where you would have been if you charged it at 20 mm -hmm. quid mm -hmm. but i mean obviously the calculation is that there's not that drop off or you know that it's less than that um for it to be worthwhile so you don't need everyone to change their behaviour. You just need some people. But then it's about do they do they then attribute the drop off if there is one to that? Obviously, it's it's a kind of grudge match thing. It's on at the right time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. There's a lot going for it. Josh was obviously like the biggest um, boxing box office draw in the country. So so there's a lot going for it in terms of saying it should do good numbers. I think people will be interested in the story and it's the chance of redemption. Mm -hmm. and it seems like a last chance already, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But I don't know. It just feels like a little bit, a little bit too far. And uh, you, the the idea that I banged on about ages ago that we've come back to is that there should be ways to to not be in to, for it not to be a binary choice. You should have they should ha be clever enough to come up with options for different pricing points to allow people to access the market at points at which they're more comfortable, and then you can massively increase the number of people that are going to be watching it. So you, you come up with ways, however you want to segregate it, SDHD coverage of the main event plus the undercard plus angles plus commentary plus extra features plus a fucking badge in the post whatever mm -hmm. to try and go we can segregate it so we don't have to start and finish only at 25 degrees we can go 10 15 20 25 30 35 and then people can pay closer to what they can afford and closer to what they how they value rather than having this stupid binary choice we are getting loads of people going 
fucking hell, 25 quid to watch the boxing. And it's not like a stellar undercard as well. No. It's a, the, the interest. It's a who's who of, like, kind of gatekeeper heavyweights, really, isn't it? And, like, a couple of people you'll have heard of. You know, it's a, it's a night of heavyweight well, boxing, isn't it, really? Yeah, well, I mean, Hergovic is up and coming. Yeah. I think he'll beat Molina. And he'll beat him. Com- he'll beat him well. I think Pavek and Hunter's pretty interesting, but I mean, really, are either of those two Pavekins a bit in decline? Is Hunter is Hunter going to be able to get to the very top of the heavyweight division? Mm-hmm. It's unlikely. So it's like, it, it could be a good fight, but is it outstanding? You know, is it like another world class fight in a lower weight division, for example? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. So I, I don't know. I think it's a stretch. Um, I, yeah, I think I think it's, it seems a little bit. I mean, whether does it make a difference to me buying it? Probably not. But then again, that's the point. Huh? That I'm I'm a victim of the, I'm the, the victim that they're looking for in terms of doing it. Mm-hmm. It it kind of grinds me on gears. I don't know. I hope it doesn't make them a lot more money because if it doesn't, then they might reconsider for future events. I think it will make them a lot of money. No, I do as well, yeah. <laughs> It'll do a damn sight more pay-per-views than the 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 card, um, the Pro Grey Taylor card. It'll do more than like whatever it was, 175,000. Yeah. It'll do a bunch more. Than, it'll do a bunch more. Yeah. Than, it'll do like a million buys probably. Yeah, easily, easily. Yeah. Because it's, so, it's got that casual, like, fan draw to it, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. I think it'll do a million plus anyway, so yeah. What can you do? Not going to change it, but you know, I'm allowed to gripe about stuff that not going to change. So that's that's me for this week. Right. Well, that is that. Um, so, guys, just a reminder: please make sure to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends all about it. Especially as we're coming up to like the Joshua uh, Ruiz fight. You know, if your friends start speaking shit about boxing or they don't know about it, put them onto our podcast and be like, look, if you want to pretend like you know what's going on, listen to these guys and just repeat what they say and you'll kind of sound a bit like you know what you're talking about because they don't. Um, Anyway, uh, with that in mind, thank you very much uh, for listening to the episode. Uh, But it is goodbye from me, Ryan. And goodbye from me, Andrew.